Hi, I'm Nikki Doan and I want to share with you a story from my time in India with my teacher Sri K. Patabi Joyce. I often get asked to uh, tell stories from back in the day and I really have so many and I thought I'd start with this one because this is really where my relationship with Patabi Joyce was cemented, let's say that. I would say I really, um, I took him on as a teacher at that time. So, this is my first trip to India, it was 1991, and I was really young, 22 years old, I had just turned 22, and I went to Mysore, and I was really flexible, um, not particularly strong, maybe a little bit, but anyway, the bottom line is that I got um, moved along very quickly in the Ashtanga Yoga sequence. So there I was maybe, maybe a month and a half into being there, and I, I was very diligent, I really liked being in there, I liked the challenge, and I was doing all of the primary series and then uh, adding the second series at the end. So I was doing a lot. Now also, when back in the day in Mysore, there really wasn't much to do. So we'd go to practice early. I started at 6 a.m. and I would try to stretch out my practice, right, as long as I could because I, I wanted the time in there. Just being in that room was precious. And the rest of the day, you know, we would go and hang out by the pool or we'd cruise around Mysore or maybe we'd take a Sanskrit lesson. But the, the reason I was there was for that room. So I would stay uh, as long as I could. So one day I'm in there practicing and Patabi Joyce, uh, in, in the original shala, the yoga room was in his house. Like literally the wall that divided the yoga studio from his house, it was right into the kitchen. There was a door. He was always going in and out from his house into the yoga studio. And one day I was in the middle of my practice. I think it was in like John Rashir Shasana, working really hard. And I heard like some arguing or yelling and, and Gurji came walking from his house into the yoga room and my mat was right there by the door and he looked down at me and he said, Nikki, why are you going so slowly? And I looked up and I was definitely like starting to get ag agitated and I remember he said to me, you, why are you Iyengar student? And at the time I just, I, I, I hadn't really done a lot of Iyengar yoga, but of course they're known for going a little more slowly. And you know, it was just, it, for whatever reason, it set me off. And I remember being in the pose and just feeling my body start shaking. And I was shaking and then suddenly I started crying and I just, I couldn't stop. And I was like, I can't stay in here. And I just got up off my mat and I, and I picked it up off the floor and I stormed out of the room. There's, you know, eight other people in the room practicing. And, and I ran up the stairs uh, because we used to do the finishing poses in the upstairs room. So I go upstairs and I throw down my mat and I get on my mat in Paschimottanasana, which is this pose, right, forward bend, and I am sobbing. I'm in that pose sobbing, like so loud. And it was not a big yoga studio, it was not a big house. So everyone in the house heard me. I'm sobbing, he's so mean to me. Oh, why am I here? I hate him. You know, just like crazy, cathartic. And all of a sudden, um, Eddie came up and he said, he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, oh, you know, Gurdjie wants to talk to you. And I said, I'm not talking to him. He's so mean to me. And he said, well, you know, when you calm down, please come downstairs. He wants to talk to you. And he left. And meanwhile, I'm just like wailing. I don't know how long I was doing that. Maybe 10 minutes. I mean, it felt like forever. But I knew that the only way out of the house was to go down these stairs, the exit. I had to go past the yoga room. So there was no way I was going to get out of there without seeing him. So, you know, once I sort of stopped crying and collected myself and I changed my clothes and got my mat and I was definitely going slowly and I walked over to go down the stairs to leave and maybe see him. And there he was waiting at the bottom of the stairs. And I took a few steps toward him and he said, Nikki, why crying? And I said, oh, you were so mean to me. You called me an Iyengar student and you know, that was mean. And he said, Nikki, you're crying, I'm crying. You're smiling, I'm smiling. And I started crying more because it was so sweet. And he said, come. And so I walked down the stairs, I put my stuff down. He said, come. 
I walked into the yoga room and he used to have a stool that he sat on in the corner of the, the room and he said, motion for me to sit down on the floor. And I did and he got on his stool and he put his hand on my head and that was it. I don't know what happened in that moment but there was some transmission, some Shaktipad and I immediately was felt so loved and um, and that was it. And I stayed in Mysore for probably another two months after that. And every day when I would finish my practice, I came downstairs and I would sit right next to his stool and he'd be around uh, adjusting people. And then he would come over, sit in his chair and just put his hand on my head. And that was it. And that made me a student of his for the rest of his life. And that's why I really felt genuine calling him Guruji. He really was. So... I really hope that all of you have an opportunity to have that kind of loving, caring relationship with your teacher. So, notes from India. Namaste and aloha.